Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com here. I have seven uh, Shiraz E um, wines in front of me. Actually, they're not, probably not all, uh, all Shiraz, um, but there, there is a certainly a rony theme. Five of them are, say, Shiraz on the label, uh, but the first two are French. So we've got two Frenchies, uh, four Aussies, and an Argentinian one to finish. Let's just dive in. This is the one I don't think is, uh, it'll probably have a bit of Shiraz in there, but it's uh, Côte de Roussillon Village, Benjamin Dano, La Cuvée uh, Reserve 2011. So I imagine the grapes in here, um, well, Roussillon's got a lot of old vine uh, Grenache and a lot of old vine Carignan, and it's probably got some little bits of uh, Shiraz and Mourvedre in there too, but no idea what's going on in here. But um, 2011, give it a whirl. Spicy, jammy, dodger, licorice, black pepper. Uh, it feels like it's going to be a quite full gutsy wine, um, but uh, what I like with that little bit of black pepper, feels like despite all the uh, richness and size, 14.5% alcohol, uh, there will be something to uh, maintain decorum, shall we just put it that way. Soft, sweet and ripe. Yes, maybe that licorice, uh, that licorice for me denotes uh, uh, higher alcohol wines, and that touch of jam, maybe I, I, I want a little bit more freshness in, in my uh, in my Roussillon wine. It's perfectly decent, uh, but uh, just verging on that uh, slightly too ripe fruit. I wish they'd uh, they got the grapes in a, a, a little bit earlier, or blended something in there to uh, yeah just calm down that baked character. So I like it, but not as much as uh, I want to like it. Let's see whether I can say the same about wine number two, uh, which is uh, the Virgil Jolie's uh, Saint Saturnin Paradis. Uh, so Languedoc Saint Saturnin uh, AOP, as this is now rather than AOC, uh, 2009 vintage. Give it a whirl. Well, the back of the bottle says Old Vine uh, Grenache and Syrah, and it's the Syrah that's uh, coming through uh, most strongly, I'd say. Um, it's got this um, slightly rose petal, um, yeah, perfumed edge. Uh, it's got, um, uh, it, it feels like it's made in a slightly reductive style, if you're into that sort of thing. But, uh, uh, and so the fruit flavours, uh, it's got this, this, this quite taut black currant edge. But then the, 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 there's, a, there's a wilder edge behind that, uh, that seems to be blossoming. blossoming. Um, and uh, the more I swirl it, the more of these um, life beyond the winemaking aromas come out. And uh, yeah, there's something really quite exotic, almost like something pomegranate-like, along with the, um, the lovely plummy fruit. What's interesting is it, it's the same alcohol level, 14.5% as the one before, but here, there, I don't know whether it's the grapes in there, I'd almost have sworn there was a little bit of Carignan in there, giving uh, uh, giving a, a little bit of um, uh, tar, well no, um, coal, charcoal-like backbone, if that makes sense, a bit of violets in there. Um, but uh, something is something is making it far far fresher uh, than the previous one, and um, yeah, it's two years older, but it feels uh, it feels like the one that's got the most uh, vitality about it. It's a nice wine. Number three, actually, I said um, th uh, four Australians. It's uh, three Australians and a South African to start with. Uh, this is Peacock Ridge, two thousand and eleven wine of origin, Western Cape. Let us give this. An old rattle dazzle. I nearly poured that into the spittoon then, but uh, let's pour it into the glass. Well, this is the label um, from the Waterkloof Winery. Well, I think Waterkloof is the, the parent winery, and then they, I think they've got a, a few other labels that they uh, they do some some things uh, under, like the Circumstances one. Uh, I think some some of them are labelled False Bay, and this one's labelled Peacock Ridge. Uh, and well, I've had a, 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 some of the peak, some of the Waterkloof, some of them are terrific, but there's a few of them, whites as well as reds, but that I've picked up this what I call a bushfire taint. And uh, it's like there's a smoky day after bonfire um, smell, um, and uh, I get a little touch of that, that here. There's some nice fresh fruit there, uh, but um, yeah, I'd just be interesting to see how much of that uh, that smoky edge is there when I come to taste it. It's like they dominates it for me and dries dries the there's something that's drying the wine out. Um, uh, so as I say, quite nice. There's a plum, there's a berry. Um, there's something a little bit more exotic, like that orange peel, or um, almost uh, 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 cinnamon, I'm not sure, but then this smoky dryness um, slightly strips the pleasure away from me. Okay, but uh, I, um, I, I, I need something really quite rich and tomato-y to, uh, uh, to, uh, to sit against that. Let's see, wine number four. We are in Australia now, so this is The Butterfly Effect, 2011 Shiraz, South Eastern Australia. 
and it smells very sweet and ripe and um, almost like verging on the plum jam character. It doesn't feel like the, th the, um, the fruit's too baked, but it does feel on that slightly sweet jammy side. Um, doesn't feel like it's, it's going to be amazingly complex, but um, honest glass of wine, let's see. Feels like a bit, someone's played around with it just a little bit too much. There's um, the sweet rounded fruit, and as I say, it's not gone too baked. But then the finish I'm left with has got this, um, uh, as if someone has tried, tried to uh, artificially freshen it up um, and uh, over acidified in the process. Um, I don't mind it. I think there was a better wine to be made. Prefer it to the Peacock, but uh, not by much. Uh, let's see whether South Australia can do better. Uh, I think both of these are these both Clare Valley. Looks like it, they are. Though this one just says uh, South Australia. Uh, so this one is Harvey Nichols uh, South Australian Shiraz, made for them by Kelly Canoon. Um, and does it say on the back of here? No, it just says uh, premium vineyard sites across South Australia. Blah blah blah. French and American oak. Let's give it a try. And this is much more like it. The, you are getting the um, uh, the richness and the voluptuous character here, but it doesn't. It, it feels like someone has just been content to uh, get good fruit in the first place, not mess around with it too much. So there is a almost like an iron character, a little bit of the licorice that I was getting in some of the. I think it was some of the French ones, uh, but um, it feels that it's more on this smoky, nicely handled oak. It's not afraid to show that little bit of American oak, but it's not too much of it, so it's not gone all. Uh, big and blobby and vanilla -y. Um It smells like it's going to be a, a, a brawny but brainy too. Yeah, berries, plums, cherries, a uh, touch of spice, a bit of the black pepper there. Um, and this freshness, an, uh, an iron-like um, mineral edge coming through. Um, I like it, and I've got a feeling that uh, it's um, it's just it's, I've only just opened the bottle, so it's sort of like it's like waking someone up in the morning. It's just it's, I think it's, this is a wine that's still stretching and um, uh, and getting those dangly bits out the corner of its mouth first thing in the morning. Come lunchtime, I think that's going to be singing, uh, and uh, I think it's going to be singing quite sweetly, quite loudly, but quite sweetly. Um, now Clare Valley for wine number six, uh, and this is uh, Wakefield's. Um, St Andrew's Shiraz, first planted 1892. I'm not sure whether there are all the vineyards, uh, all the vines that are left, um, a date from that time, but I've got a feeling that some of them in this part of the, the world will be uh, uh, certainly um, into their second century. And this is more in the um, old fashioned, yeah, old fashioned uh, style. Uh, there is this really loose, rounded, soft, plush. Um, yes, not afraid to flaunt its oak, uh, but uh, with a sheer depth of flavour, this like sweet chocolatey, but dark chocolatey, sweet dark chocolate, can you have that? Uh, um, and, and then the fruit, it's these big plums, mm, cherries and all that, that, that it, it feels like it's going to be a mighty satisfying uh, glass of wine. Let's try it. It's big, it's ripe, it's rounded, it's honest and uh, it's very tasty. Um, Subtle maybe isn't its for subtlety isn't its forte, but um, honestly, juicy straight down the line, honest big flavour, bear hug like wine. Um, you can't really complain about uh, about it too much. If I have a problem, I, know, I said I wasn't going to complain about it too much, but now I'm going to complain. If I have a problem, uh, it's slight a bit of the problem that I got with the the butterfly um, Shiraz that there was something there that made me think that someone had tried to um, add a little bit of freshness. Here, I know Clare Valley doesn't, uh, doesn't really need to, to do too much to its wines, but um, there's something just on the finish there that, that slightly concerns me, and I'm just wondering whether it's, again, as with the Killicanoon, whether it's just been open and in a couple of hours' time, uh, that slightly hard edge that I get oh, just on the finish will have softened, but um, for the moment, Lovely big honest flavours, just that that minor carp about it, but it really is a minor one. Final wine. So the, the St Andrews was 2006 vintage, so is this one. This is Las Moras, we're in Argentina, in San Juan, um, and uh, so Gran Shiraz, 2005. Uh, 2006, after all that set up. 
Well, San Juan is the province to the north of, uh, of Mendoza, and um, it, some people say it's, it's one of the, the best places in, in Argentina for, for Shiraz. Uh, sometimes I wonder whether it's a bit too hot. And yes, some of the vineyards are higher up, but um, I, uh, I have to say I've not been impressed with some people by some of the wines that are coming from there. Although I stick my nose in here and it actually smells quite good. Uh, it's got something on the back label about how there's a lower lying bit of fruit, uh, middle and then higher. The idea being you've got the bulk, the, the, the brawny bit from the, uh, the lower lying fruit, you've got the freshness from the higher lying fruit. Uh, and then you mix them and they make beautiful music. It smells, um, it smells good, it smells like the, the um, well it's nearly, or nearly seven years maturity now. Uh, we're doing filming this at the end of December 2012, uh, but uh, it feels like there, there, there's uh, that's still the richness there, the heartiness, a bit of chocolate, maybe a touch of volatility, but uh, it, it, it's in balance with the rest of the wine, uh, and it smells good, earthy, rich, good but not great. But let's taste it. I like bits of it. It's strange because there's a there's a quite a fine, delicate aromatic edge, but then there's a really quite brawny. Um, character as well and in terms of the oak that's in there there's part of it that seems to be giving a smoky baking character but there's also part of it that seems to be giving a green edge it's almost as, as if someone has over toasted not very well seasoned barrels um, and um, not very well seasoned oak that uh, made it into barrels um, and the finish I'm left with is just this this mixture of it feels like there's different elements that are still waiting to come together. And for a wine, I'm not sure when they would have bottled this, um, it, whether it would have been sitting there and someone has done something to it prior to bottling. If it's been in, I don't know whether it's going to say on the back whether it's been in oak for blah, blah, blah. 18 months in French oak. So that would mean if it's 2006, it's been in, it's been in barrel for four and, four and a bit years. Um, but uh, So it's been in bottle for four and a bit years. Uh, but it still feels, it's almost as if someone has done something to it and it's, it's been bottled, it's been made the wine, kept it in a tank and bottled it more recently and um, tarted it up before they bottled it. Um, I'm not sure about it. It's, uh, yeah, as, I, I, there's, as I say, there's bits of it that I like, but um, uh, as a harmonious entity, it uh, doesn't quite work for me today. But as I said with the previous two, I think that it may, it, may, it will, uh, given a bit of time, it may be showing more of its um, true essence. So I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt, and I won't, uh, I won't diss it completely now, but uh, I will report back. But, um, oh, favourites, I mean, I like the Virgil Jolly and the Killy Canoe, those, those are probably my two favourites of this septet. I will see you soon.